Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out-of-box review for the 160 scale Arm Slave Arbalest version 4 from Bandai. And yes, this is 160 scale, but don't think of it anything near the perfect grade size like we think of 160 scale in terms of Gumpla, because the uh, Arbalest, the Arm Slaves, are much smaller in size in real life. So 160 scale puts this at right about the size of a uh, high grade, a 144 scale Gumpla kit. Maybe a little bit larger slightly, but it's pretty much like a high grade. Now that said, it does have a lot of detail and a really, really nice part separation there. So it's definitely much better, I think, than your normal high grade. Uh, it's it really building it, it, and like when it was all coming together, it was really reminding me a lot of a real grade. Now it doesn't have the full inner frame uh, like we would imagine like with a real grade kit, but when it's all put together and when it's all done, I think it looks like, like if you put this next to uh, a real grade Gunpla kit, uh, it would look very similar just in terms of the overall color separation and details that you're getting with this just straight out of the box. It looks fantastic. There's pretty much nothing in the way of stickers on this. There are a few, but they're really not too bad, I don't think. So I guess if I had to sum it up one way, compared to Gunpla, it would be like between a high grade and a real grade. So it's very, very nice though, I will say. So again, just wanna say a huge thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review, guys. Do check out the link to their store down below. Use my coupon code there, Zacharelius10. Uh, we're taking a look at the Arbalest today, but I do have the two different versions of the Gernsback as well, the regular Gernsback as well as the, uh, I think it's Commander type or something like that. Uh, we'll be taking a look at those two as well. I'm thinking I might do those uh, together rather than like separate unboxings and separate reviews. Just unbox the two of them uh, in one video together and review the two of them together because they're pretty much the same and they're they're both actually very very similar to this kit as well they're just like some a few parts different basically like the, i think the shoulders and the head is pretty much kind of the main parts that are different and then the weapons of course so uh let me know what you guys think down below if you guys think the Gernsback two different kits should just be reviewed together that's probably what i'll end up doing just to save myself the time and effort and because they're so similar but anyway it's so putting this together it generally feels you know similar to when you're putting a gundam kit together it doesn't really feel too different it's not like something as different as like a frame arms girl or something like that uh but it was a different definitely a cool different experience putting this together and i'm quite pleased with how it came out. I'm looking forward to working on this some more in the future. Okay, so here on the kit you can see we've got these really nice open hands which are not like really super expressive but they are nicely detailed and they do give you a little bit of uh, variation, a little bit of options there. Because other than that all we have is these holding hands. I really wish this kit would have come with a set of closed fists but this is all we've got, just these open hands and holding hands. Now what can those hands actually hold on to? The first option here is this knife that can just come out here like that. So nicely detailed, this is just held in the hand. As you can see here on this side, we have this little peg. That's for plugging it onto the side of the thigh. It's not really a side skirt anyway, but that can just be plugged onto there like so. Alternatively, if we remove this cap here on the back, uh, maybe easier said than done, shouldn't have cut my nails before doing this review. We've got this little spot here where we can plug in this connection piece onto the back skirt like so, or back of the waist section anyway. And then you can just slide this into there like that to hold this on the back. That's another option that you can do. And then we have this uh, machine gun or a submachine gun or something. I'm not sure exactly how you would call this, uh, but there is that. This has some connection points here, which don't really seem to be of any use for this particular kit. But I know when you get the other Gernsback kits, you can put different parts of the weapons uh, together to make this into like a bigger weapon. So maybe that's where uh, those plugs will come into play. But anyway, I like this. This is actually probably my favorite weapon included with this set. Because then our third weapon option here is this shotgun. I'm really just not too big of a shotgun fan myself, but this has some pump action here, which is a kind of cool gimmick, I guess. And then you can fold the stock back like that there as well. So this might be pretty cool if you want to do like a cool like two-handed grip. This one as well can also be stored here on the back skirt by putting that just straight onto there like so. Unfortunately, the machine gun though, as it is, doesn't have any way to be stored on the here without having to do some sort of modification or customization or something. Then we do have another sort of weapon option. It's the anti-tank dagger, which will plug here onto the face. But what you have to do is basically remove those little blue parts there and then replace that with this. Now this can't actually be used in the hand because it just has like the connectors built onto there. So you can't really do anything with this other than just have it on the face, which is a cool look. One thing that I've always liked about uh, these uh, arm slaves, and I don't know if it's maybe just this one. I don't know how many other ones aside from the arbalest have this, but with the knife attached onto the face there, I've always thought it was pretty cool. I should also take this time to remind you guys that I have no connection with the source material of this uh, uh, 
anime or manga or game, whatever, anything I have no, I've never watched, never played, never read any of that. So I really don't know anything about the series at all. And then the last bit of accessories that we have are these different parts here, which we'll use for the lambda drive, which just this is the shoulders and the back open up. And we'll use these parts to have that all kind of opened up. It's a really cool gimmick, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Let's first just talk about the stickers and things we have on the kit. So of course we have a sticker there for the eyes. And then we have a sticker here on the front of the crotch, that blue part there on the top. And then around here on the back, we've got these white stickers, which will go up underneath these kind of gray parts right there and there. Other than that, that's really it for the stickers. So you can see a lot of really nice color separation here with these little parts there on the head and the shoulders, especially where there's the yellow just kind of makes that pop. But there's really nice color separation, part separation around all over the kit. So let's get into some of the articulation. The head can go up to there, but it's like this whole neck can also lift out like that, which is quite weird. But I guess if you wanted to do some pose where you have it like looking over to the side like that, if you had it like doing some sniping pose or something, it needs to look down the uh, camera of a gun or something, sort of similar to what they did with the Jim Sniper too. You can do that very easily with that neck joint being as it is like so. Otherwise you can just have the head pointed down as far as there. For our stomach articulation, it's very nice. We have a really nice bend here forward and back. It's actually a couple points of bending there. So you can get a really nice ab crunch and then you can unbend the whole torso side to side kind of at the base of the torso that will bend there like so. The shoulder joint can swing forward very nicely like that, but then it can actually bend more by bringing out the whole side of the torso like that, which is very cool. So you can get a really good bend there across the front of the chest. As for upward mobility, the shoulder unit will move by itself up to there. You can bring the arm up really only to about 90 degrees though. So it's kind of unfortunate that you couldn't get more vertical movement out of the shoulder. But otherwise, the arm just works normally. Rotation there at the top, double joint to give you a full bend there at the elbow. And then the wrist is just on a ball joint. We don't really have any skirt armor, so we can kind of skip that. But this part here on the back will move up and down a little bit here. So if you need to move that to get that out of the way or something, you can move that. There's an interesting gimmick in the waist to help with the articulation. You can kind of pull the hip joint down a little bit. And I guess that will give you a better range of articulation, maybe to get the knee uh, nice and high up. Otherwise, maybe it would be running into that uh, middle section there, I suppose. I don't, I'm not really sure, but that is something. Otherwise, if you guys couldn't tell, it's not really going to be much hindering the articulation here at the uh, th at the hips. You can get the legs very far out, uh, up to the front. It's not really going to be a problem. Back, you can move that out of the way and get them back pretty far as well. When we bend the knee, we have a nice separation of that knee armor there with a nice double bend to give you a full bend there at the knee. Down here at the ankle, you can move that side to side side very nicely, very far, so that's good. This bit of kind of ankle armor around there will move up and down a little bit. This part there at the back can also move down like so. The whole ankle itself will move back there kind of at the middle of the lower leg, which is interesting, so you can move that back. Point the toes down is not going to happen actually, so I guess it's good that the, the whole lower part of the leg here will move back like that because you can't actually point the toes down or point the foot down at all. You can move it forward a bit because you can see we'll move that up all the way to there. So overall, I think the articulation of the ankle should work just fine for all intents and purposes. And then up underneath the feet, some nice detail there as well. For a quick size comparison, here it is compared with the high grade 144 scale RX-78 2 Revive kit. And as you can see, it's definitely taller. It's definitely not as big as a Master Grade or a 1100 scale Gundam kit, but it's going to be tall compared to most uh, Gundams in 1144 scale. So, as far as any negatives about the kit, the articulation is definitely not a problem for this kit, I can say that. One thing that I did forget to mention though is that up underneath the waist section there is just the little bottom part there underneath the hip joint, you just pop that off, you want to put that onto an action base, there is an adaption, there is a... There is a connection point there to put this up on an action base if you want, which I'll do here in a minute. Other than that, yeah, I mean, it's got a couple of stickers on there. That's, I guess, kind of a shame if compared to no stickers, but it's really not too bad. It's just a few of them. The part separation, the detail, everything on this is really, really nice. Uh, it has three main weapons that you can use with this, which is nice, two of which can attach onto the body when not in use, so that's cool. Overall, there's really very little to say negative about this kit. One point that I think you maybe could argue is the price with this being priced at 2,800 yen. Like I said, it's it's comparable to a real grade in some ways, and but with having that real grade price, you might be expecting a little more out of this, but honestly, I think you are still getting a really, really nice kit. Now, if it's 
if the price is going to be worth it to you or not, you know, is maybe going to be up to you. As I said before, there is reasons as to why some of these other properties like Star Wars and now with this Full Metal Panic series, why these kits are a little bit more expensive compared to what we would maybe expect from Gundam. Uh, I won't really get into that, but just in short, Bandai has to pay more for the licensing of these, so that just comes down to us as consumers as well unfortunately but just something to remember before you go off complaining like oh why is this 2800 yen what i can get like a really awesome real grade or something like that for around the same price all right and just to wrap up the review here here is what it looks like with the expanded shoulders and back parts there with the lambda drive whatever that is i'm again i'm sorry I don't, i'm not really familiar with exactly what that means or what it does i'm, I'm sure it's just some performance and has enhancing aspect of the robot but i will say that it definitely does look very cool i really like the look of that with those expanded out especially in the shoulders looks super super cool and then with the knife on the face that's another really cool aspect of this so definitely looking much more unique now uh, with those aspects added onto it and again the uh, machine gun or submachine gun whatever there uh, is my favorite weapon of the three i definitely like that one the most but with the Gernsback kits we have some really cool weapons coming out with those as well so i will be checking out those in the future not immediately right after this review uh, but we'll be checking out those soon enough as well so let me know if you guys have any other questions or comments about these kits because i can address those in the review of the Gernsback kits uh, because they're very very similar just with a few parts here and there changed so overall really cool really nice if you guys were looking for something different if you're fans of the series or uh, if you're just looking for a cool kit and don't want to break the bank quite so much on like a frame arms kit or something like that or something from Kotobukiya this is definitely a really nice kit and uh, top of the line Bandai quality for sure everything works really well so with that yeah, well, guys, like I said, leave any other questions and comments down below because I'm sure you'll have some stuff that you can point out to uh, that will be news to me. And you'll have questions about this that I maybe didn't answer. So again, hopefully this review has been helpful and informative to you guys. Check out the link to USA Gundam Store down below. And as always, guys, hope you're having a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.